Putting yourself through an intense 20 minute intermediate rowing workout is exactly what we're going to do today. These are high intensity intervals with a ramp up every round. So let's call this a ramp workout. We're gonna get into it, stay tuned. You're here because you're looking for a great intermediate workout or maybe you just have 20 minutes. You're like, Shane, get me worked out in 20 minutes or less. I got you covered. Let's hop onto our rowing machines. There's nothing that you need other than a rower at this point. And again, when you're here with Dark Horse, any rowing machine counts. Don't worry, don't stress about what you do or don't have. Uh, so first things first, we are going to just start rowing. Here we go, three, two, one, go. So we're just gonna start off with a nice, easy cruise. No real pace that you need to worry about here right now. I just want you moving for the sake of moving, okay? The first thing you wanna do in a warm up is make sure, call it greasing the groove. You wanna grease the groove for your body, that your body starts to remember, oh yeah, rowing, <laughs> that thing. And start to move yourself through the range of motion that you're gonna do that day. All of that's really important. So let's just start grooving. Things to think about here, keep the arms long, push through your entire foot so that you're getting that force production through the leg. Work on matching my stroke rate because that's gonna help you train the order of operations, meaning getting your body moving the right way at the right time in the right place. We call that kinesthetic awareness, making sure that you're turning that kinesthetic awareness on, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start to, uh, basically, I'm gonna keep the stroke rate the same and we're just gonna try and make our machines louder by pushing harder for five strokes, okay? Starting that in two, that's one. That's two, all right, five strokes, keeping the stroke rate the same, but pushing harder. One, two, three, four, Five, then bring it back down. Again, back to the movement. Practice good movement here, okay? The best time to practice the mechanics of the stroke is most definitely not in the middle of a workout. <laughs> it's the worst time. In the middle of a workout, you should just be focused on moving hard, making yourself sweat, making your body work. That's the sole intent. You should not be having to think about your mechanics. Are you practicing and in training? Of course. But the best time is when there's no stress, which is right now. Okay, now we're gonna take it up to eight strokes. Okay, we're going up to eight strokes. In two, that's one. That's two, let's put on the power for eight. One. Two. Three. Four, five, keep the stroke rate low. Six, seven, eight, and off. One, there we go, just right back down. You gotta make sure you warm up before a hard workout. The last thing you wanna do is rob yourself of a good workout because you don't warm up enough in the first five minutes of your workout, your supposed workout, is actually warm up. You need to get yourself hot and sweaty before a workout starts. Okay, now we're gonna take 10 strokes, building that pressure. Here we go in two, that's one. That's two, building it up, here we go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back it off. Nice and easy. All right, come join me at the release position back here. And we're just gonna do some quick pick drills to work on that order of operations, starting with arms only, ready? Let's go. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. We're gonna add in the body. Nine, 10, add in the body. Hip swing and arms now. Arms and body is what we call it. Two, three, four, five. Add in the legs, full stroke. One, finishing it out. Two, three, four, five. And set that handle down. I'm gonna talk you through this workout and we're gonna get this thing started. So as always, I'm not gonna tell you what we're doing until we're actually in the workout. That means you gotta join me for it and then at the end, we're gonna have a fun little go with things. So here's what we need to do. We just need to be able to set up the basics of the workout on our monitor. Any machine flies, I'm gonna walk you through how to do it on the monitor that I have, which is a concept too. But again, any machine's okay here, so you just need to be able to set it, set time. So from the main menu on a concept two, we're gonna select workout, that's the B button. New workout, D button, intervals, D button, intervals time, B button. I need to change the set time to four minutes. There's four minutes on the clock. I'm gonna hit that right arrow, the A button, one, two, three, four times, the plus button once. That gives me one minute. Now I have four minutes on, one minute off. That is going to be our interval length. And with that being said, you're gonna find out what we're doing inside each interval once we start. Hit that check mark E button, strap in, grab that handle, and let's get ready to go. Here we go. In three, two, one, go! All right, starting off this first ramp. We're going to a stroke rate 18, which means I need to calm down. <laughs> Way too high. And your objective, put as much effort into each of these four minute windows as possible. So I'm gonna set rate for you. Wow, I'm excited today. Too much coffee? Maybe. I'm setting an 18. You just squeeze out that power. Follow me. Make sure you get the arms away, hips closed, then the knees bent. Finally, hit that 18 for you. Getting ready to shift, 22. Up four beats in the rate. Now get comfy quickly. Learn to settle in. Keep that handle straight, moving in line to the sternum. Straight back to the machine. Breathe, remember, you squeeze as much out of every rate as you can. I'm doing this together with you. We're rowing together, it's not just you. It's you and me and every other dark horse out there. Up to a 26, here we go. Stepping it up, four more. It's dry here. My mouth is getting dry. Talking's getting hard. We got one more minute to go. You can probably guess where we're going on rate. Thirty. Here we go. Take it up. Nice and quick. Stay light and snappy.
halfway. Stay with me. Come on, push. Easy. Woo! We only have three more of those. No big deal. Now take mental stock. <laughs> How much longer did your fourth minute feel versus your first? Probably quite a bit if you're anything like me. Want to know how to make a minute feel like an eternity? You sit on a rower. Okay, getting ready to pick it up again. One minute of rest, we're going right back into it. Two, one, 18. Ooh, all of a sudden it feels a little heavy, huh? All of a sudden, you don't have that quick rate to lighten things up. Ooh. Keep trying to squeeze. Allow me to be your the rate for you. Arms away, close the hips, bend the knees. Ooh, breathing. Ooh. Nice steady breath. Up to a 22 here. Right on it. I got you. Join me at this 22. Think light, snappy, quick turnaround at the catch, and then accelerate whew, through the drive. Handle accelerates all the way through the body. It's not about muscling it, it's about finessing it. Dance with your machines. I'm teaching you guys to waltz, not to box. Ready to go up again. 26. Here we go, shift it up. It's a big gear shift here. But going from 22 to 26 definitely gives you that lighter feeling. All of a sudden each stroke doesn't feel so heavy, but your heart rate starts to climb. And then you smash it with that 30 and everything just skyrockets. <laughs> Hold on to me for that 26. Thirty. Here we go. Step it up.
Over halfway. Easy. Woo. I'm cracking a thousand meters. What about you guys? That one was 1,042 at a 155.1. Nice, easy rowing. It's pretty important that you don't just slack off and stop during this minute. If you stop and your legs stop moving, well, you're gonna be in for a world of it when you start each round. So you keep moving with no pressure, even shorten your stroke, right? Go to half sled, there's nothing wrong with that. But just keep your legs moving, keep the blood flow gentle. Okay, picking it up, picking it up again for round three. 18. Make that machine noisy. I personally am thinking about feathering my catch better. Meaning, I'm not trying to act like I'm running into a brick wall of tension. I'm trying to act like I'm picking up just the lightest piece of yarn and then trying to accelerate with it. Not picking up something that requires me to smash it. I'm picking up something that requires me to be gentle. And then I accelerate. Then I try to throw it through the wall behind me. <laughs> Okay, first step up, 22. Here we go. I'm keeping that same feeling now. I'm making sure that I don't lay back too far. Right, length of the back end of the stroke is not your friend. It just wears you out and doesn't actually give you any benefit. Be very conscious of that. Getting your breath ready for when that heart rate climbs. We're improving those aerobic systems by making you breathe heavy, making you breathe quick. Going up to a 26 on this one. Trying to keep that handle in a straight line any up or down movement slows down your rate. So keep it level. Imagine you're dragging it across the tabletop. Stay and snappy. Getting ready for our final minute. Zoning in. Two, one, shift up. Accelerating. I gotta get out of 29s and into 30s. There we go. Oh, 
Over halfway. I got your rate. You give me power. Breathing <laughs> with this dry air. Those of you that live in deserts, I feel your pain. I have to re wet my mouth and my throat every time. Ah. Okay, 30 seconds left. Um, I cracked 1,058 meters that time. 153.4 average. Goal is to beat it again. Just like you. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling better and better with each round. Honestly, the more I focus on my mechanics, the smoother I try to be, the better it all goes. Getting ready to pick up to an 18. There we go, 18. Lay that foundation early for a good score. Don't wait until the final minute to try and pour it on because odds are you're not gonna have it. You do the work in the first round, every round after that gets easier. There's your 18. Struggling with the low race today. I don't know why. Light, easy catch, accelerate. That's what I'm thinking. Getting ready up to 22. Here we go, 22. Stay on top of your pressure. Distribute your energy evenly over the entirety of the four minutes. Do not be a sprinter in the final 30 seconds. Give more, give early. And learn how to manage your energy over time. Breathing. Getting ready for 26. 26, here we go. Feeling strong. A little surprise in this final minute. You're gonna open it up as high as you can take rate and all out go. Two, one, here we go. As high as you can take it. Beat me if you can on rate. Thirty-two, thirty-three for me.
Ho! And easy. Wow. That one got me. That one got me. Uh, I was touching 35. <laughs> Maybe could have gone more, but I didn't give more. That's on me. I want to know how high you made it in that final minute. Drop a note in the comments below and egg everyone else who commented but clearly didn't do the workout on to get this workout done. Okay, let's set that handle down for one second. I'm letting my erg data know that the workout's done by doing that. Am I finished? Yes. Four rounds, that's all I need. Saving it to memory. Okay, so let's pick those handles up. Join me in a gentle cruise now. Woo! You guys, you, that was amazing. Number one, I'm so appreciative of you. Number two, I love that you're here and you consider yourself a dark horse. And if you're here and you're like, what's a dark horse? Well, number one, a dark horse is somebody who unexpectedly wins or succeeds. Usually, despite the environment around them. Meaning, nobody else is there doing it for them, gifting it to them, they were never given it. They had to earn it. That's a dark horse. If it helps, go look up a definition. It's an idiom in English. Dark horse has a meaning. And it's that I support every single one of you. I support you. If you know that you've got something you want to prove and you have the work in you to do it, the heart and the soul to do it, that is why I named this dark horse. It has a meaning. It's not just a name. And that meaning is very important to me and it means something to everybody that's subscribed. We're over 100,000 subscribers now. That means 100,000 people plus believe themselves to be dark horses. That is incredible, truly. Number three, if you just finished this workout, you need to hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it at the end of this video because if you haven't, why? Come back for every workout that you need. I got you covered. And I got you covered with every know-how that you want on this machine. I got you covered. There's literally everything you could want to know, I've answered. And if I haven't, ask in the comments below. Whew. Okay, we're just gently moving. We're getting this cool down happening. I hope you're feeling as good as I do. That was a really good one to get through. Okay. Just about 15 more seconds of moving here and then we're gonna add a little bit of a stretch. And easy, set that handle down. Okay, unstrap. I want you to take that right leg. You're gonna grab uh, your, your foot and you're gonna draw that knee down towards the floor while trying to open your hips. Feel that stretch through the right hip flexor, right quad. Right. Get that nice gentle stretch in. And take big deep breaths into your gut. So as you inhale, your belly expands. As you exhale, your belly contracts and try to bring your breathing in and out through your nose right now. Let's switch legs. Left leg back. By the way, absolutely no one in this video asked this, but um, in case you were wondering, because I do get the question sometimes, not very often, but I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that millions of people have emailed me asking, no. 
But if you're wondering what shorts I'm wearing, because I get the question, these are the Lululemon Pace Breaker 7 inch um, with a liner, is what I love. I link to them in the description below. So if you're in the market for good uh, apparel for when you're on this machine, I found that that Pace Breaker, the 7 inch Pace Breaker with a liner, um, is great because it gives you the support you need while rowing and it's trim enough that you don't have a lot of baggy short coming off of you. So if you're looking for what shorts to wear or what clothing to wear, it's in the description below. Next, we're gonna take our legs straight up. Let's get a nice reach. Think about lifting that chest. And you can actually kind of tuck your pelvis from behind you so you get a nice lower back stretch and drape forward. Oh, that feels nice to me. So yeah, I always like to call out stuff that many of you ask about. So um, these tights, Lululemon pants, Lululemon shoes, uh, Innovate t-shirt, our own. <laughs> but seriously, the shorts I absolutely love. I, I kind of wear nothing else other than seven inch pace breaker lined shorts. And yeah, I get a affiliate commission if you do buy them, but it doesn't cost you anything more. <laughs> Ah, oh, nice. Okay, now I'm gonna take my hands, place them on my seat. I'm gonna try and drive my hands down towards the floor, pull my shoulders behind me, and open up my chest. Oh, so I get an opening of my spine, because so much of our rowing we spent curled over with that spine inflection. Oh, very nice. Give yourself a twist over the right, and a twist over the left. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get alerted when I come out with our next workouts. And if you've been curious about all the new rowing machines that have been popping up on the market, well, check out this video where I'm going to address just that.